Hi there everyone, Musical A Ready here. Hope you guys are all good. We'll be uh, setting up to drive a train today, coming out of uh, Faversham here. It's a pity that this uh, simulation only starts at Faversham. It would have been nice to be up in uh, Cambridge, the much more famous city. But anyway, Faversham it is. We'll be taking this javelin train up to London St Pancras via Strood and various other places. I've uh, hacked together a little bit of a uh, announcements package. Ha! Huh, look at that, she's just pulled out her umbrella. It is indeed raining a little bit. Oop. That's why I hate umbrellas, because you get stabbed in the head. Or you accidentally stab other people in the head. Either one is really embarrassing. I tend to wear a rain hat when I'm walking around in the rain. Let's keep the uh, rain off my face, essentially, and my glasses. And uh, whatever happens to the shoulders, well, these things are unavoidable. Anyhow, that guy's about to leave. And they're going to go in front of us, which is unfortunate, because that means that we'll be uh, probably slowed down by their red light. We'll be departing in about eight minutes from now. Time to jump on board. This is very unusual uh, train setup if you're uh, not used to it. Uh, basically, over here we have the that kind of thing, AWS PDWS, all the stuff that you normally find in the British trains. Over here, though, you will find a uh, AC, DC, and CTRL, which means uh, channel, train, rail, link somehow that, uh, which is your pantograph overhead, AC power. Um, in this particular space that we're in Faversham right now, there's no overhead. Obviously, we have the third rail there. So we have the rail foot touching the electricity. That brings in DC power. And then partway through this journey at a place called Ebbs Fleet International, we'll be swapping over to the pantograph overhead. And the weird thing that happens, because the pantograph is designed for the international trains, um, this speedometer will go from miles per hour into kilometers per hour. Also, because it's an AC uh, engine instead of a DC engine, you actually get a bit more power out of it. So um, when we're tracking along in that segment of the tunneled uh, part of the railway, we'll be uh, pushing through up to like 250 k's an hour. Whereas uh, in this section, we have a top speed of something like 80 miles an hour. Which is twice as fast as your, um, what do you call those things? The underground uh, train from the Bakerloo line, which are kind of capped out at 40. But yeah, it's nothing like 250k an hour. Anyhow. Here is our train, just sitting down for a second. Not a bad little uh, vehicle. There's the disabled seats there. You can chuck in a wheelchair. There's a toilet. If you do need to go. Uh, this carriage doesn't... Oh, yeah, there it does. That's the overhead racks where you can chuck luggage because, obviously, these trains tend to do long-distance journeys. I can't remember if... There we go. There's a nice luggage rack. I wish they had that one in the front. Yeah, it's more of the same. Cool. All right, we'll head back up to the front of the train because we do need to start moving it in about three or four minutes. Let's tuck the key in.
Lots of alarm noises as the uh, train comes to life. Going to set up the temperature a touch. Get the lights on. Here's a funny thing. You can actually move which side the uh, windscreen wipers sit. Depending if you're on the uh, French trains or the British ones. Hi there. What's that? Not a me? It's a very French sounding name. Just going to stand up and have a look outside, making sure that our lights are nice and white. They are. Cool. Sharing the time. KVB test. That's working fine. So that's the thing that uh, makes lots of noise at you if you need a warning. Fabian. Hi there, Fabian. Uh, yep, we're in day mode. What I'm going to do is bring the brakes back to minimum because we're just sitting here. Double check that we have the line voltage. We do. And the circuit breaker is not illuminated, which is correct. Got a couple of noisy boys on this uh, train. We have a depot whistle. Makes that noise. And we've also got two horns. Just gonna unlock the doors. The wrong doors. Yeah, announcements. I actually made them myself. I'm just playing them through FUBAR. Uh, when I've made them properly and not hacked together in two hours, I might actually release them somewhere and make a post about it. But yeah, we should have a few announcements on the way. I'm not entirely sure of the timing on all of them. There might be a few that end up too early or too late. I'll have to readjust those as we go. But uh, read in the description on YouTube. Sorry, I didn't put it in the, uh, the Twitch one. Or well, maybe I did, not sure. But certainly in the description in the YouTube channel, there's a little description of how I made that. Anyway, we will need to be leaving in about 20 seconds. Let's go. Attention, please. Please remain seated until the door. And we're ready to run. Now, under the DC power, these trains are a bit slow taking out, taking off. I'm at full power now. We're in the rain, it's not wheel slipping, it's just slow. And it'll be fairly slow all the way to Ebsite. Once we get the panograph power, it'll be great. So you can see the uh, speedo there, 23. Slight deceleration at the moment as we're dragging the back of the train through that point. There's a 60 zone, let's go. So 
So I was, um, there's a nice video that's just been released a couple of days ago that explains how the uh, signalling system works in my state of Victoria, down here in, in uh, Australia, which is different to uh, the way that the signalling system in uh, Sydney works. Now, apparently Sydney's based on UK, whereas the um, Victorian system is based on the United States system that we have in, for instance, uh, some of those other trains that we have um, as big freighters like the sand patch grain so that's my understanding about why I don't understand these signals as well as I should there goes a crossing and another one coming up And the other one. Okay, I've got about uh, five miles to get to uh, Sittingbourne. We do need to pass through one station on the way through. We don't stop. Other trains do. Not javelins. Just continuing to accelerate. We have a 75 zone at the moment. I've got an 85 that are approaching. Pretty much if we maintain full power, I reckon by the time we hit 85, we're going to be in the 85. Might need to back off a touch. Let's see how we go. 70 now. If we get to 75 and we haven't passed the 80 sign, then I will back off. And we're just about there. Bringing it back down to power handle 2. Now 1. 85. Back to full power. We can see that the third rail foot is on the right side at the moment. Every once in a while I just have to hit the, uh, the buzzer. That noise. Just to let the train know that I'm still awake. Remembering I've got an 85 zone currently. I've got a 90 zone approaching. Once again, just backing off ever so slightly. Half the power. 90 zone, full power. Basically every time I hear that little ding sound, I'm going to hit that yeah, alert system. There goes the station. Three miles. I said, we're the countryside. Must have missed one uh, whistle stop sign thing. There's one. I think I'm doing my uh, whistle in backwards mode. It should start high, shouldn't it? Bum 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 bum. Here in Australia, we've only got one horn. It's either going ha or it's not. Oh, we've got an 85 zone. Come into the brakes. And back to the 100. We'll need to slow down soon anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Sitting born coming up. Let's start the braking. Hi there, Paul. <laughs> Indeed, we are not a flight sim. 
We're throwing a javelin today. Nice church over there. Yeah, it's coming to the brakes. We're looking to be about 40 miles an hour at the start of the station. Forty now, there's the start of the station, and a good about sixty percent. Nice little town, two uh, churches I see there. Same. Yeah, I wish we had an Australian route too. As I said, I think the Sydney North Shore line would be the tourist one that everybody would want to buy because it's, you know, across the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Everyone wants to do that. You could even do the 30 out of 1 over the Sydney Harbour Bridge like they did last year. I'd buy that. Nice, eh? Blue Mountains, yep, that'd be another nice one. All the way from... Um, I'd say the zigzag railway down to Penrith. Attention, please. Stand clear of the doors. That's wrong. Five point six miles. Now I was uh, researching Raynham Station and I found that there's two Raynhams in uh, this area, essentially. <laughs> one in Kent, which is where we're at, this one, that we're going towards in five miles, and there's another one in London itself. It's felt the same. Here's a freight train we're about to cross. Oh, the pool, it's not too space heavy. Um, I haven't actually measured it, so I've got no idea really. I just installed it from Steam and I had plenty plenty of space in my D drive to go. I don't need any more though. Microsoft Flight Sim takes up a heck of a lot. 90 zone. Flat out power. They're only accelerating up to 70. Yeah, 500 gig on uh, Microsoft Flight Sim, that sounds correct. When I used to have uh, P3D, I was like, oh, P3D is pretty big. It takes up like a good core of uh, Microsoft Flight Sim, it's huge. Coming up on the 70 zone, nice little commuter train. Gidding. Ding. 
That's the rest, another whistle. This train in this kind of mode it just drives like a normal British train. It's when we get on to the uh, pantograph section of the line that things start getting interesting. That's when this whole section of uh, the panel lights up for the first time. It'll be a while off yet. We're on four tracks. I'm going to go ahead and kill the wiper. I'm going to have to double check every announcement on this uh, journey to get those announcements right because at the moment I kind of guessed at what they might be saying <laughs> based on what's around so it's not going to be that accurate but at least the recordings are based on the real ones That's correct, no autopilot on these trains. Uh, the German ones have autopilot, but this one's basically that handle. Love those German trains. They do go faster than these, though. So you kind of need that autopilot. I'm doing 300k an hour. <laughs> it's like. When can this train stop? Well, I've just chucked in the emergency brakes. We'll be stopped in about five minutes. Yeah, same. I like my uh, flight sim as well. That said, trains are fun. little less prep time but you need to be a little bit more focused on what's ahead of you while you're driving whereas uh, in an aeroplane it's more inside the cockpit kind of stuff this is Wayne. change here for London Overground and other national rail services this is the southeastern service to London St Pancras International calling at Chillingham, Chatham, Rochester, Strood, Gravesend Ebbsfleet International, Stratford International, and London. Yeah, I'm sure that's not where they end that announcement normally, but there we go. There's two of them right next to each other. Nice to see that weather has cleared up. Another sunny day in England. I've got no idea what the real British weather is doing today. I should look it up. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if you had active sky for train sim? It rains in the right place at the right time. Attention please. Stand clear of the doors. That's home.
Yeah, it's not live weather. I wish it was. It's dynamic weather. So it makes it up. I just said that there's scattered rain showers, I guess. So it's doing scattered rain showers. It might rain occasionally, it might not. I do wish we had live weather for Transim. That'd be hilarious. Wonder where you'd pull the data from though. It's a ninety zone, was it? Maybe if they could pull the data from a weather radar somewhere. Let's plot the rain where it's meant to be. Try and match it to what the clouds are doing. line of touch. Yeah, that's what looks like. Out of sixty green light. And there's the sixty zone. Ah, I've got a yellow coming up ahead. Let's slow her up. Getting micro stuttering. I haven't had too much of that, although the German train got a little bit of it. But then again, it was doing 250k's an hour, which is a bit different from 30 or even 80. That's it, this one will get up to 230 in the tunnel, so we'll see how that goes. Rain again. This is Gillingham. This is the South Eastern service to Underston Pankers International, calling at Chatham, Rochester, Strood. Gravesend, Hibbs Street International, Stratford International, and London. Right there for very long, let's keep going. Attention please, stand clear of the doors. Hi, the toilet inspector. Hope you're well. <clears throat> Got 
Got a 50 zone up ahead. That guy's in the stop. Tunnel time. And we want to be blowing the whistle as we come out of the tunnel. It's the right thing to do. Dirty zone. Chatham coming up. Thirty. Low tunnels. For a high speed train, this is rather low speed. So that announcement has to be a bit quicker. We will shortly be arriving at Chatham. Please ensure that you take all your personal belongings with you when leaving the train. Rochester, that's where Rochester Castle is. Big tourist thing. That's what it looked like in the rain. Good to see some passengers with their umbrellas out. Thunder. Pity those things don't function, it'd be hilarious if they could get them working. Park in front of that and look down your train. Some stacks. Get moving. Attention, please. Stand clear of the doors. Cool. How are things doing, Toilet Inspector? My work gave me a whole bunch of unworkable shifts and apparently for some of the days we only have like three people working so if one person says they don't want to swap shifts <laughs> you're stuffed
And come in to a stop ready. Ah. This is an abandoned train station. Look at that. No one stops here anymore. The old South Rochester. Or East Rochester. Whatever. Yeah, that one needs to be shortened as well. Green aspect on the turn. Oh, the Bright. This is the South Eastern service to London St. Pancras International, calling at Strood, Gravesend, Dead Street International, Stratford International, and London. The next station is Strood. Strood. How rude. <laughs> Attention, please. Stand clear of the doors. Less than a mile. Less than half a mile. Not far at all. Got a 20 zone for the bridge. And there's a castle. So, there it is. It's Rochester Castle right there. Behind this high rise ugly thing. But there's the castle. You can see the keep right there. If you look at Rochester Castle on Google, some really nice photos of that. Nice. Pretty hot. 20 zone. It's not a 20 zone, it's a 40 zone. It's 20 uh, as we exit the bridge. So we are turning immediately after the bridge. Slowing down now. Slowing it up. That's uh, a very slow track for a high speed train. 15 mile an hour. Feels like we're crawling. This 
is Strood. This is the southeastern service to London St. Pancras International, calling at Gravesend, Head Street International, Stratford International, and London. The next station is Gravesend. Gravesend. Well, we did have some nice sunny weather, but it's all gone away. Sad. It's quite a skinny bit of platform there. Start moving. So it's a six mile journey for this next bit. Seventy once we're in the tunnel. And the wipers are off. Train coming at us from the other direction. How are we all doing today on this fine Thursday? It's been a while since I've had a Thursday to myself. Been quite active uh, with musical things won some uh, awards last weekend that was fun picked up a random new gig that'll uh, take me out for the next Thursday so yeah I've got Thursdays free hey Trent want to come and play in our orchestra sure why not <laughs> that's one week off back into it again in I think it's two no three weekends time I will be uh, doing two concerts in one day on a Sunday. One in Ballarat and one in uh, is it Castlemaine. I always get Ballarat and Bendigo mixed up, and I always get uh, Castlemaine and Castleton mi mixed up. They're not the same place. Nice tunnel. Not as nice as the next tunnel, or the, the big tunnel with the pantograph. But, not a bad tunnel. Eighty zone, right? No, not an eighty zone. Ah, speeding. We're not speeding anymore.
big good yard. Good yard right there. Another whistle. That was it there. Nice little uh, country drone. I like these longer segments, They're a lot easier to drive than the, the short ones. Short ones are all low speed, tight, curly. This is like a long straight stroll. Getting the train up to the speeds that it kind of wants to be at. bit of time to look around. Slow down request. And we're clear. So the gig that I've got coming up, the Stollington Symphony Orchestra, we're playing Brahms Second Symphony, also the Elgar Cello Concerto. I'm starting to develop a playlist for the end of the year. Instead of a playlist of songs that I like, it's a playlist of orchestral music I've played in, essentially. And it's getting rather long. Still some more platform to go, let's use all of it. Take care. How very polite of it. That's also going the same direction that we are. Fun.
things are getting a little bit more uh, busy and um, suburban out there. So you know more farms. That rain is still pelting down. So we're getting rumblings of thunder. Next is Ebb's Fleet. Nice. I like Ebb's Fleet. That's where we uh, change mode from DC foot power to uh, overhead pantograph power. Attention please. Stand clear of the doors. Cool, things are going to speed up soon. Though I do need to change operation of the train. The entire ambience of the train will change. It sounds different when it's on AC power. As in the engine. gets more power. It's a more powerful uh, train under AC. So we get better acceleration, we'll get a higher top speed, everything will be in kilometers per hour instead of miles per hour, and we'll have a little autopilot system starting to uh, give us some info. We go from a UK train to a Europe train. A French train. All with the power of a button. A lot of us down that way. Fun. That's slower down. That one needs to be shortened as well. We will shortly be arriving at Ed's Fleet International. Change here for other national rail services, including Eurostar services to Paris. All right, to continue the journey, this service's power mode must be changed. So we need to pull up that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a bit weird. There we go. Pantograph up. And one press to clear it. So you hit the pan button for about five seconds. That'll bring the pan shoes up. Click the CTRL. 
until it turns on and then you have to hit the pan up so the panograph goes up you'll get two lights up here and you click the pan up again to close the circuit breaker we are now in pantograph mode the pantograph touching the wires up overhead there it is that's where all of our power is coming from instead of that little third rail down there the shoe is raised CTR rail light is in and soon we go underground we're now in kilometers per hour and in a little while we'll get a little we pass over one of the magnetic strips that start to activate our essentially autopilot it's not a complete autopilot it's more like a target this speed kind of deal anyway And as I said, the train now accelerates a little bit better than it used to. Off we go. We have 130. We can do 130 kilometers an hour. Look at that speed, rolling, rolling through 80k now. This is the kind of stuff that I'm used to. Overhead wires. That's how we do it down here in Australia. Overhead wires, kilometers per hour on the on the speedo. Ah, it feels like home. And two twenty five, full speed, off we go. This is a tunnel. One track separated in each little tunnel segment. Lights in the tunnel. Luxury. No need to pass other trains on the other side of the track in the tunnel. Fourteen miles. And now we're in a, uh, a sky rail. Straight from tunnel to bridge. <laughs> Hi there, Demi. Good to see you there. I saw your uh, your message from like 12 hours ago. I like that tunnel. It reminds me of the tunnels that we have in Melbourne. Quieter though. Faster. The tunnels that we have in Melbourne I think are only rated to 80 not 225 that's hot I love how fast this train is going under AC power that's just that's nice
Look at it go. <laughs> Almost gives the old uh, German train a run for its money. The camera can't even keep up with her. Nice. It's going 220Ks now. I'm just going to have to back off the power. Why can't the rest of the rail network have this? Dragging along at 80, 80 miles an hour under DC. She wants to just run. We have thrown the javelin. It is flying. Separated rail from the other side there. This is brilliant. Look at it, yeah. Bang. <laughs> ah, that was nice. Back down into the tunnels. see from the design of the tunnel you can conceivably evacuate from the sides there evacuate from the train into the tunnel and I'm sure those uh, yellow flag things are where the walkways are to evacuate up a staircase or something that's my assumption back to full power we're starting to climb again And it reckons we need to start slowing down. So we're going to maintain 225. And when it beeps at us again, we start slowing down. There we go. Into about 50% break. A little less because we're at 220 where it's switched. There we go. 200. Down to 160, we should be about 50% brakes. And continuing that down to 130. A little bit more brakes are a little bit laggy. There's 130, we'll maintain that. And 100. Thank you. 
International Rail Services. Also change here for the Circle, Hammersfield and City, Metropolitan, Northern, Piccadilly and Victoria Line. Hi there, Demi. I'd love to know what the uh, actual announcements are for this, because I've got the recordings of them all, like in little gaps, but I can't, I don't know what they should say for each stop. I'll hack something together. Hopefully it works out. Hopefully it's made the uh, experience a little bit more enjoyable. I wish Trainsim World would put it in there for themselves. Dovetail. Anyway, Stratford International, near the Olympic Park. This is pretty much the last time we get to see the outside until we hit London St. Pancras. So it's all tunnel from here. Nice bit of kit this train, I do like it. Nice to see we've got passengers still on. And that these announcements are actually working. A couple of seconds, we should be on the way. Attention, please. Stand clear of the doors. Five miles to go. Hundred KPH, off we go. Yeah, under pantograph power this train just wants to go. Got no uh, no need to hang around and uh, slop like forty miles an hour. Hundred KPH, why not? Let's just go. Two hundred and twenty five KPH. Let's just go. I sometimes wish there was a longer uh, distance to travel to London, St. Pancras, on this section of the track. Not that other rally stuff. But the pantograph, yeah. She flies. Two twenty five. 
down sort of this short distance between uh, Stratford and London is um, you don't really get to go to full power. We're still accelerating and we have to decelerate already down to 200. One thirty. Reckon about half of the brakes should get us there. Hundred. Eighty. So I said, eighty is the uh, limit in the Melbourne tunnel. So I should feel right at home going this speed. I don't. Now leaving the fun part of the track. Bye bye automatic stuff. Back to driving a bog standard old train. Got a 40 up ahead. And we've got a yellow light, which means half a 40. Max break. That looks rather red. Wait for the signal to change. That's boring. Is anything moving? Well, we are apparently five minutes early, so we can wait. Throwing away all that fun, fast travel stuff that we're doing. I need to sit here. 700 yards away from the station. Hope the scenario isn't bugged. We'll wait for the 40.
There's a rain shower as I've left. Yeah, I should have been using my DRA at the stops. Actually, I'll use it now. It's the correct time to use it anyway, sitting in front of a red light. Even more important to use that if you're sitting at the red light at a station with your doors open. And it's like, it's time to leave, let's shut the doors. Uh, let's not move. Basically, the DRA stops you from applying any power. It's kind of a final reminder that you have pressed this button because you're expecting to be stopped. As we are at this red light. Good to see another train coming the other direction. I suspect that was sitting in our platform and we're about to occupy the platform. It was just in. Hey. Yep, there we go. DRA is off. Let's roll. It's a 40 zone, remembering that's kilometers, not miles. And that's 25 at the platform start. And they're out. Cool. Let's get that all sorted. Going to drop that into the trail. Going to turn that off. Lights. And that light. All good. Well, that is the Joplin train. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. There's no further running on that particular unit. Cool times. Good looking train. I do like them. They drive nicely, especially on Panagraph Power. Um, I like a... Uh, a longer line with just pantograph power. Maybe the channel itself. That would be hilarious. An hour of just travelling along at 2.25. Gorgeous train. I like it. Gonna walk the entire length of the train just because I can. Dudes, you can get out. The next station is the last station that you were just at, dude. <laughs> the only place this train goes is back where it came.
wish the passengers were a little bit more intelligent. For instance, like, when this train is no longer in operation, maybe get out. Baby change room? Okay. And the other end. Anyway, I haven't prepared a return journey with any of the um, announcements, so I won't be uh, making a return trip. I think uh, next time I'll be streaming will be Saturday for FNO. They're doing a southern end FNO. So New Orleans, Raleigh Durham, probably Atlanta, that kind of stuff. I think I'll be taking the MD88 out. Probably in uh, P3D rather than Microsoft Flight Sim because they've got more scenery in P3D for all of the above. So that'll be Saturday. Sunday is um, I'm doing a musical thing in the afternoon, about 8 p.m. until late. The uh, United Kingdom is doing a big event in I think Birmingham, Birmingham Live, which is live air traffic like. A land party for air traffic control. Essentially. And it'll be fun to get onto that. Back in the old days I would have pulled out the um what's that thing called? The old Dash 8 in uh, the Flyby livery, but Flyby doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately, so might have to look into what we'll be flying into Birmingham. It probably won't be the Dash 8, or it might be. We'll see. Let's uh, consider that for a bit. Fun station, this one. Quite large. Anyhow, we might uh, head back and see if we can get out of uh, St. Pancras here. I know there will be an invisible wall somewhere, but I haven't found it yet. Probably down there. Yep, there's an invisible wall. Can I get up these? I don't know if these escalators work, that would be even better. All the lifts, that would be insane detail if we could use the lift. Oh, well, that's uh, street. Street entry level. Okay, cool. Anyhow, the weather in Melbourne, not too bad actually. Today was 19 for a top. It's going to get down to about 6 overnight, I think it was. Um, have a look into the future, but 19 today wasn't bad at all. Warm even. Bit windy. That's my only complaint. Anyhow, I really enjoy the javelin and I'll uh, have to do the return route when I put together some announcements for that. Anyway, until next time, which will be Saturday, I have been Musical Aviator and I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.